Yes, sir. I'd like to have an argument, please. Continuing on our theme of no one being more enslaved than those who falsely believe they're free, I think it's time we looked at the difference between critical thinking and contrarianism. Skepticism is great, questioning what we hear, great, but are you sure that's what you're doing? Or are you just being contrarian? I'm Chris, welcome to the main feature of your scroll through YouTube. I know being contrarian can mean simply offering viewpoints to challenge someone, and sometimes some perspective is needed. That's not the kind of contrarian I'm talking about, because that is a kind of critical thinking. I'm talking about knee-jerk contrarianism, when instead of listening and considering something based on its merits, we reject it. We often act contrarily when we feel our beliefs are threatened. Sometimes it takes the form of trolling or sea lioning. Not all trolling is some kind of insecurity. People have all kinds of reasons to troll, and unless they're funny, I usually ignore them. But a lot of it is because people perceive their beliefs and the institutions that embody those beliefs to be under threat. The thing about contrarianism, as I'm using the word, is it doesn't offer solutions because it doesn't rest on any kind of analysis. An argument's not the same as contradiction. Can be. No, it can't. An <laughs> argument's a connected series of statements to establish a definite proposition. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. You analyze the situation rigorously first, and then the solution should flow logically from that. But if you just watch the news and listen to Twitch streamers, you'll never get that full picture. So if that's not critical thinking, what is? Well, in a video like this, I can mostly only speak in generalities. Like I can recommend learning about how the brain works, our cognitive biases, how we make mistakes. I can recommend books on that if you want. Um, learning to spot logical fallacies is useful too, although in my experience, it doesn't help us spot flaws in our own thinking. But what you need to think critically about will depend on your situation. The more you know about something, the more accurately you can think about it, especially if you know the history. Do you know the history of the institutions around you, like the government, the law, the police, the prison, the school, the family, or the economic inequality? And when I say the history, I mean several books on each topic. Aside from occasionally reading a biography of a famous person they've heard of, all most people know about history is the Disney version they were taught in school. That limited understanding of history limits our understanding of today. We think we know stuff when we've never really learned about it. Anyone can be a contrarian. I certainly used to be. But it seems especially prevalent on the right wing. Look how quickly Trump's supporters adopted the term fake news to describe everything unfavorable to their hero. It's a kind of 1984 double thing. In 1984, you had to believe whatever the party told you, even if it contradicted something else they'd said, even if it negated your own experience. To Trump supporters, the guy has done whatever he says he's done, and anyone who says otherwise is fake news. This attitude makes people line up behind rich and powerful people because they claim to oppose the same people, like liberals and the Clintons. Trump portrayed himself as a different kind of politician, one who'll work for you for a change. I'm the opposite of every guy you've ever met. But in an age when we have no confidence in the political system, every politician says they're different from all the other politicians. They all claim to want to go and clean up Washington and get rid of all the corrupt people. Which of them has ever made a lasting change that benefits you somehow. Sometimes when we think we're thinking for ourselves because we're different, we're actually being manipulated. But it isn't just saying, no, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. As someone who's studied the political economic system for over 20 years now, the way I see it is the system itself is the problem. The problem is the concentration and use of power. 
whoever is currently using it. If you want a conspiracy, look at everything people do with power. A few rich people make decisions in their own interests behind closed doors that affect all of us, and they lie about it. That's a conspiracy. All of their decisions could be called conspiracies. They conspire to steal from us and trick us every day. The people in the seats don't matter so much because the incentives and limits for each of them are pretty much the same. But if you don't learn and think about the system as a whole and how power works, you inherit your beliefs about it all from the system itself. So you think the system is good, but the wrong people are currently in power. So we have to support the right ones. As much as I pick on right-wingers because they're so dangerous, liberals and leftists are not much better in this regard. When I was on Facebook, I was always getting blocked by liberal pages for telling them inconvenient truths about their favorite presidents. Because why let the pristine image you have of some dead white guy get tarnished by facts? And then the youngest of the remaining fans of the Soviet Union make jokes about mass murders because they've decided they never happened. Or they were mistakes that mean nothing in the grand scheme of things. I think learning history should be about understanding the world, not whitewashing the past. But I'm in the minority. Conspiracy theorists, most of whom end up on the right, but by no means all of them, are another kind of contrarian. If you think you have reason to believe in something most people don't believe, it makes you feel like an independent thinker. Boy, everyone is stupid except me. That feeling itself lets you maintain your beliefs regardless of how much evidence there is for them. Some people have doublethink, others tell themselves they're free thinkers. And never mind politics, people will stand by athletes and actors and others who are accused by multiple people of disgusting shit and many of them will just claim it's all fake. People feel the need to tell themselves all the words they don't like are lies because it cools down the cognitive dissonance. Because when there's so much pressure on your beliefs to change, you know, due to evidence that they're wrong, the only way to keep them is by telling yourself everyone else is wrong, lying, fake news. Some people, like most of the people who paid for blue checks for Twitter, anything they see they don't like. They just decide it's not true. And if you think it's true, you're just a sheep who can't question things like they can. They'll take anything anyone who could be considered powerful has said that agrees with you as proof you must have got the idea from them. Thus you believe everything you hear and follow everything the ruling class tells you to follow. Ha ha, gotcha. So the government flies a couple of rainbow flags and makes purely cosmetic gestures to trans rights while trans people lose their freedom and rights everywhere. And people who actually care about trans people get told, we're just following the trends and believing everything we're told to believe. Apparently having basic respect and compassion is woke sheepery and we could only have figured it out if the powerful tricked us into it for their own nefarious purposes. Again, they have to tell themselves others are wrong to maintain these beliefs at all. And of course, defending beliefs has the effect of solidifying them as obvious and indisputable and anyone else is an enemy. And it can be a bonding exercise for people who hold those beliefs too. That's why I prefer to ignore and block people who are clearly not interested in learning or discussing things on my terms. How about enough of this? No, you have Oh, shut up. <laughs> in my last video, I said we should value being wrong. Well, being contrarian all the time is a way for us to never be wrong. It's an exercise in convincing ourselves. Contrarianism takes no thought. No, this isn't an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's just contradiction. Instead of thinking case by case, you come up with a rule so you don't have to think anymore. This is one example. 
I sympathize with the sentiment. If you've been on this channel for long, you know I'm opposed to every aspect of the government. But that's because I study it. So I know things are a little more complicated than that. The state, corporations, newspapers can't just lie about literally everything. They lie, for sure, because they have their interests, but they don't have the monopoly on information required to get away with lying about everything all the time. Instead of having this rule, learn to see how and why they lie, how they exercise power, and why you would want to lie about all of that. But being powerful institutions, they don't always have to talk about things that matter. They have a lot of influence over what we talk about and how we form our opinions. They might try to get us arguing over unimportant stuff, like new colors on a beer can. They can also make whatever promises they want. I mean, if we're to trust corporations and states, there should be no more pollution at all by 2050. They can talk about how they believe in popular ideas like freedom for trans people and then do nothing about it when exercising power. You could probably be a spokesperson for some powerful organization. Just go on and on about how much you love and believe in the people in our community or in our great country. And use lots of multisyllabic words like majestic to say how great they are stroke their egos. To appeal to their inner contrarian, you can make them feel smart for realizing it's all a lie. For years, the biggest polluters pleaded ignorance on climate change. They knew about it, they just didn't admit it. They paid $30 million to spread lies about it. But since most scientists and other eggheads were saying climate change was real, a contrarian right wing, convinced of its own ability to see through the lies, decided it was not real. Just a hoax by big... whatever. They were being manipulated by the oil oligopoly, but it felt like critical thinking. Now climate change is out of control. Some of the same people are still saying we can't do anything about it now because it will cost too much money. We can't address a real problem, you see, because the contrarians are against doing that. There's a whole constellation of YouTube and Twitch channels that embody this contrarianism. Anytime they can find something they could dislike for any reason, like there's a black person in it. They make a whole video about it, or rant on stream for three hours about how this new movie is woke because right-wing reasons. They have to keep making content for people to keep coming back, right? But their content doesn't have to be accurate, it just has to be contrarian, which provokes outrage, which leads to clicks, which lead to money. There's a great video on the topic by Pillar of Garbage, which you can watch here, but what prompted me to make this video was a Noah Sampson video that he put out a few days ago. This right-wing wannabe skeptic is trying to cast doubt on some study about representation of women in gaming. He asks these questions to sow doubt about the study. Okay, I don't believe that statistic at all. Where did you get that number? Did you simply ask three of your British friends? Because there is no way that most British women are eternally offended snowflakes who care about that kind of stuff. Are they really still using the word snowflakes? <laughs> then Noah explains, because the study was just publicly available? So this is the Opinium Women in Gaming survey from early 2021. It was a survey of about 1,400 United Kingdom gamers age 18 and over. And one of the key findings here was that 69% of women felt that there needs to be more female characters in video games in general. So this guy could have looked it up and answered his own questions, but instead he chose ignorance. And he chose to spread that ignorance under the guise of skepticism. Hey, I'm just asking questions. Yeah, but you're not looking for answers. Again, these people will comment on anything floating around that their viewers may have heard about, right? And the more outrageous their take, the more clicks they get. So of course, when the government started talking about the dangers of gas stoves, these guys started turning on their gas stoves, breathing in the fumes. 
even making memes using the one joke they know. I guess giving yourself cancer is one way to own the libs. Or shooting yourself in the nuts. Either way, somehow I think it would be easy to get right-wingers to um, instigate their own demise. Just tell them Democrats or Biden or Fauci say you should be careful around cliffs. Democrats say you shouldn't try to touch the bottom of the ocean without scuba gear. Democrats say it's dangerous to stick your head in a wild tiger's mouth. Are we going to listen to them? Hell no! Big events and trends naturally take up more of our attention, so they leave conspiracy theories in their wake. COVID was on the TV every day for a couple of years or something, which made two things inevitable. First, the people in power would take advantage of it however they possibly could, Second, all kinds of conspiracy theories would result. Now, if you're already an expert on viruses or vaccines, you can think critically about the subject. You might be able to distinguish between fact, opinion, mistake, and lie. But most of us know so little about viruses and how they work and spread and how vaccines stop them that we're easy prey for grifters. We might want information, but we don't always know where to get it. Contrarians come out of the woodwork, appealing to our sense that something is amiss, because it always is, and provide baseless speculation disguised as answers. It's easy to find reasons why you're right about anything, and call them all clues that support your theory, like inconsistencies in the numbers, as if it were an easy task to collect data on COVID, so an inconsistency is proof they're all lying. Once they decide the virus is a lie or not a problem, a person can start calling everyone else sheep and start feeling superior. Wearing a mask must be a lie for the sheep too because it's from the same people who talk about COVID. <laughs> Doctors. Doctors are idiots. If you want to question conspiracy theories, there's a few things you can ask. If there's no COVID, or if there are mass unreported deaths from the vaccines, how did Big Pharma and every government manage to get nearly every doctor and medical organization in the world to say COVID was real, or that vaccines and masks slow down the spread of the virus? Did they bribe all of them, threaten them, brainwash them? Are there no whistleblowers or if there are, why do they only approach the Alex Jones types and not more popular media that would give them a wider audience? It's great to question authority, but there's nothing skeptical about assuming all authority is lying about everything all the time. It's easy to come up with superficially skeptical reasons not to trust whatever you don't trust. You can question anything. Who paid for this survey or study? Is it really representative or accurate? The people doing it are biased. But often those objections come from people who've already made their minds up. And the supposed skepticism is actually excuses not to think. The mind is so good at excuses, sometimes I think that's its main purpose. But no number of questions can substitute for reading the thing itself, or listening to the person and actually engaging critically with their words. No amount of thinking can substitute for learning, and no amount of knee-jerk contrarianism leads to the truth. Part of contrarianism seems to be latching on to the latest excuses to be against the thing you're against. If you've already made up your mind and no amount of new information will change it, you might as well have as many excuses not to think as possible. People keep adopting new language like woke and groomer and saying it everywhere because it's their new way to justify their bigotry. I noticed it with TERFs especially a few years ago, how every week TERFs would come up with new arguments to justify bullying trans women. They're still saying, what is a woman, as a gotcha to shut down discussions. They call themselves free thinkers when they all say exactly the same answer to that question, adult human female. 
They apparently have not considered the ambiguity of the word woman, or the fact that female is no improvement in that regard. They call themselves critical on a topic they've never thought critically about, and they call the existence of trans people an ideology, which it is not. Words mean whatever the contrarian needs them to mean to win an argument. When bombs were sent to high-ranking Democrats, Trump critics, and CNN in October 2018, right-wingers immediately called it a false flag, just a fake attack so Democrats could win the midterms. Whoever did this, they couldn't possibly have been from my group. It could only have been one of the bad groups. This same pattern repeated after the January 6th attempted coup, when people say the rioters were incited by federal agents, so apparently they had no ideas of their own. And whenever neo-Nazi organizations like Patriot Front march around and right-wingers claim they're all feds. They don't want you to think there are any fascists anywhere because they can continue to operate with impunity. Again, I think don't feed the trolls is our best advice. If you can ignore them and avoid them, just do that. Don't let them suck up all the oxygen with irrelevant contrarianism. Thank you. If you really watch and listen to them, you find all the famous right-wingers, all the ones that we've heard of, are grifters. They might want power, money, a new face, but you never know if they're sincere in anything they ever say. Like the YouTubers, they have to stay relevant, so they keep saying words like woke to get airtime on the news. They're aiming to be invited to speak on the Fox News type shows, but also to get featured on those liberal media outlets like Media Matters that regularly repeat all their cringiest takes. These are the right-wing thought leaders. Wait, that seems generous. Excuse leaders. They're the ones who appropriate and spread these words and reasons. Many of them claim they're being silenced, persecuted, or the new one, cancelled, for their takes only because their takes go against the dominant orthodoxy. But they don't. There's nothing original about what right-wingers want to do. They want power to bully and profit off the most vulnerable people in society. That's not anti-establishment, that's run-of-the-mill social hierarchy. But the grifters don't put it that way. People criticize them for the terrible things they say and do, and they claim they're being persecuted for their forbidden opinions, because why would they be trying to silence me if not to suppress the truth? So you're a free thinker and a rebel if you agree. These high-profile right-wingers often make claims about what they say needs to be done to feed the illusion that the right-wing cares about freedom, when the point is power and violence. For example, they sometimes talk about abolishing such and such a government agency. Anything that's some kind of problem to the right at the moment, they claim they want to abolish it. Of course, they would never abolish any aspect of government because then they would have less power. If you listen a little more carefully, you hear what they really want. Are you in favor of, of eliminating any agencies? I know conservatives in the past have talked about closing the Department of Education. Would you do that? So we would do education, we would do commerce, we do energy, and we would do IRS. Mask on, abolish the bad agencies. And so if Congress will work with me on doing that, we'll be able to reduce uh, the, the size and scope of government. But what I'm also going to do, Martha, is be prepared. If Congress won't go that far, I'm going to use those agencies to push back against woke ideology and against the leftism that we see creeping into all institutions of American life. Mask slips off. Use them against our enemies. Does it sound like a guy who actually wants to abolish anything? as if he would ever willingly give up an inch of power. But they're not that subtle. We can learn to see through their masks. The reason I think it's so important to face reality the way it is, is people are suffering under the status quo, and we should be making all kinds of changes. 
Denying the problems and the need for change might feel better in the short term, but it solves nothing. You can deny climate change all you want, but you might still have to evacuate your home because of floods or wildfires. You can tell yourself it's not so bad for racialized people or queer people or homeless people, but that won't stop them getting harassed and attacked. It'll only stop you from caring. I think as things get worse and worse, as climate change ramps up, costs go up, poverty goes up, and quality of life drops, people will engage in more and more contrarian and conspiratorial thinking just to maintain their comfortable beliefs. It's a way of feeling in control. Christy is coming. Christy is coming. Christy is coming. What it means is, instead of fighting together for freedom against the ruling class, we have to fight our rulers and their contrarian foot soldiers too.